So I've started my job as a portrait photographer, and I'm having moments. Uh, we had two weeks of training, and I'm having moments where I'm like, I can't believe I get paid to learn photography. It's so cool. Like, all my jobs in the past have been factories and uh, your know, food prep, and probably the job I liked the most was at the library at the university. But basically, every job I'd ever had was really, you know, just a, a factory process. And suddenly, I had this job where, like, where it seems like I'm getting paid to go to school and learn photography. And we had a, a, a couple of schools, really small schools that we went to, that we did first because they were so small we could take our time and us rookies could work with an experienced photographer and, and you know, sort of get our feet wet before we went into the great big high schools and we're on our own. So, uh, Monday morning, the first real day of work comes along. The training is done, the practice schools are done, and uh, a half a dozen of us are going to this great big high school about an hour away, and I forget the exact number of students, maybe, you know, maybe 1,200 or something. The school, high school I went to was half that at the most, and, and so this is, you know, a huge high school to me. And so we get there, and each of us set up, so we're in the big gymnasium and each of us have our own little portrait studio set up. And what happens is they call the students down alphabetically, they come into the gym, and they choose which camera they go to based on which pose they want for their photo. But any of us can do any pose, so there's, there's a lot of flexibility there. But they come in, they find their spot, they line up, and uh, you know, for, for a couple of hours straight, we're just cycling students through, uh, getting them through. And so for, you know, two, three hours we're doing this, and then finally we get a lunch break. The school's all, all on lunch break, so we stop for lunch. And our, uh, our boss comes in to see how we're doing, and uh, that was really cool. Um, I really liked my boss, and so, you know, he was the kind of guy that you want to have around. He was encouraging, and, and it was really cool that he showed up. He could have stayed in his office all day, but, you know, he took the, the hour-long drive to, to come out and see us, see how we were doing. So we checked through how we were doing, and as it turns out, we weren't doing too well at all. Uh, we were really behind. So if we had 1,200 students to get through, and we were halfway through the, the day, uh, we were not halfway through the students. And we were really going to have to pick up the pace to get them all done in the afternoon. There is no option for coming back the next day. So it was actually really cool. My uh, our boss stayed around to help us out, and uh, he jumped on my camera with me. So basically, uh, I, I was standing there bringing the students in, getting them set up in the pose. He'd he would take the picture, and so you know we could get the students through really quickly. So so that was cool. You know, everybody had to pick up the pace, but it was nice to have the boss with me, uh, helping me out. But what something interesting happened. Because of the fact that I wasn't on the camera taking pictures anymore, I was just greeting the student to my little studio and bringing them in and setting them up, I was overhearing the conversations that these students were having right before it was their turn to have their picture taken. And they were saying things like, I've never had a good picture before, uh, you know, I'm so nervous, and, and things like this, and I realized, like, wow, this is, this is a big thing for them. And, then I remembered, well, during our, my two weeks of training, sometimes I had to sit there, like us photographers, we would practice on each other. We'd practice the poses and stuff. So I would have to sit there and be photographed. And actually, it was very uncomfortable. And then, of course, we would critique our work. So then my image and other people's images would be up on the wall, you know, on a big projector. So there's your face towering over everybody. It was really, really uncomfortable. And I thought, you know, like, I, I thought back to my school days, and I'm like, yeah. This is high school, man. This is like the most self-conscious time of your life, right? And you're lining up to get a picture. And it really bummed me out that like, they've never had a good picture before. Like, this is my job now. I feel like I'm responsible for every picture that's ever been taken <laughs> at, a, at a high school. And, and uh, yeah, I'm just, you know, really, really bummed out for them. And, you know, so while I'm listening to this conversation, my boss is, is trying to help me to see how to work faster. You know, we don't have two minutes per student. 
we've got under a minute per student, you know, to get them through. And like, that is quick to, to walk over, grab their little scan card, you know, welcome them in, make them feel comfortable, sit them down, get them into the pose. These aren't models, they don't know how to pose. So you've got to get them set up properly, you've got to get back, get them smiling properly, take a picture, reframe it, and take a second picture. We've got to do all this like lightning fast. And so, you know, he's, he's giving me tips and, and showing me how it's done and everything. I mean, I'm a rookie, right? So what do you expect from me? Um, but I'm, I'm really bummed out because we are just cramming these students through, just racing them through. And it's like, we're not stopping to be too concerned about whether they like their picture or not. I mean, I'm feeling like our whole job is a failure if these kids have never liked a picture in all their years of going to school. They've never had a good picture. Uh, you know, so the day ends. We finished the school on time. You know, it, it seemed like that was our number one concern that day. Get the school done on time. And by the end of the day, I was super discouraged and something kind of set me off. Something kind of triggered me. And um, is it, it's something I heard a teacher say or a co-worker. I don't know, maybe my boss. I think he had left by this point. Um, I don't know, just, just something negative about the students and it just made me feel like we don't give a crap about the people we're photographing. We've got this, this process where we're going to set it up, it's cookie cutter, we're going to go from school to school, we're going to cycle you through, we're going to get you in and out as quick as possible and frankly we don't give a crap. One thing we do care about beyond getting the job done on time is hoping we got a perfect smile so that mom will buy the photo and then our company will make lots of money. Uh, they handed out our uniforms that day. Up until that point, we, we hadn't had a uniform yet. And so, I mean, walking away from the school, I was like, I'm, I'm in a factory again. But now, you know, the commodity is human beings and smiles. We're, we've got our factory process, our number one goal is efficiency. The number one goal of a factory is efficiency. I mean, quality as well, but efficiency and quality. And so we got to get these people through quick, and we got to get a smile that mom will buy. And we got to wear a uniform, which I despised by this point. To me, you know, when I think back to high school, to me, the uniform was like the epitome of your life is over. Welcome to the adult world. Everybody dresses the same and does the same thing, punches in at the same time, clocks out at the same time. And by the time I got home, I, I don't remember for sure. I think that there was, some, there was probably some annoying traffic or something on the way home. And I was just so angry by the time I got home. And it felt like such a righteous anger. I was so angry for these students that we, we clearly didn't care about them. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's almost com comedic when I think back on it, but, but not, you know, it was not in the moment. I just, I felt like I had mustered up the courage to take this job and now it was going to be like every other crap part of the world that I have ever experienced. Tuesday comes along and we're at a local school, again, another big high school and, and uh, we meet up there, you know, six o'clock in the morning. So I've been up before the sun, before the sun was up, getting ready for work and loading up my gear and everything, which took up almost the entire car. There was hardly room for a passenger. <laughs> um, so we're, we're going through the school and us rookies are a little quicker now. You know, we've had a, a day where we've really been pushed to our limit. And uh, like anything, you know, you get used to it, right? You get a little bit better. And so it, it was looking like a better day. We weren't behind, right? We still had to work hard, but we weren't behind. And at lunchtime, we would uh, we talk about the morning and you'd, you'd funny stories from the from the students we photographed and 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 everything. There's no shortage of, of stories. And at lunch, some students came in who had missed their call in the morning to come down for their photo. So we would take turns as photographers getting up, taking a minute or two to, to get their photo, and then sit back down for lunch. Then no one photographer had to give up, give up their whole lunch period in order to to get these kids who missed their photo. And so uh, two or three kids came in and, and I took the picture. They asked if they could see the picture. And I'm so agreeable. I just want to say yes, but I'm not allowed to show the kids their pictures. Partially because we simply don't have time to show them their photos. And then 
you know, we do, and we don't have time for them to be nitpicking over their photo. And I'm just so agreeable and, you know, such a, such a nice guy. And, and I don't say that to be arrogant. I mean, I'm like wired to want to make people feel happy to the point where I say yes to everything, even when I want to say no. And so I let them look at their photo. And surprise, surprise, they don't like the picture. So I'm like, well, you know, I'll take another one. Right, it's lunch break, right? We don't have a lineup of students. I'll take another picture. And they didn't like that one. And, and uh, eventually we got it right. And, you know, with the, the next group of students who, who came in, I, I got this brilliant idea. I thought, <clears throat> when they said they didn't like the picture, I said, well, is there anything specific you don't like about it? <laughs> it felt so brilliant in the moment. Like, ask them a question. What don't you like about your picture? But I hadn't thought of that until then. I didn't know what people didn't like about their photo. And it was often something like about their bangs. You know, if it was girls, like their bangs split or something like that. Uh, maybe it was their posture, they were all slouchy, or a fake smile or something like that. And I realized it was usually something very simple that we could correct. And I started to pay uh, more attention to things so that when kids came in, I would notice the bangs. If the bangs were split, I'd hold up a mirror and say, your bangs are split, you might want to fix them up there. And they would be so appreciative and so, so happy. And it only took three or four seconds. And I thought, if, I, if I'm quicker with each student, I have time to let them look in the mirror and, and see their hair. And, and I got good at uh, spotting fake smiles, partially because at the end of each day, I would sit down with my boss and he'd go through all my pictures, you know, 150 pictures or something from the day, <clears throat> and he'd critique them. And uh, he could go through the photos lightning fast and pull out the good ones. Uh, he didn't have to stop and look and hum and ha and question. He knew a good, a good genuine expression when he saw it. And so I got, I got good at seeing what I was doing right, and he would show me what I'm doing wrong. And, I mean, did it feel like crap to sit there and have somebody say, here's what you're doing wrong? Yeah, you know, after a long day's work of trying hard, and then, you know, you feel like you're a failure. On the other hand, he told you what you were doing right, and you knew tomorrow's a new day, and I, and I can try all these new things. And so, so my pictures would, would get better. I would get better um, you know, at, at sensing what might be wrong with this photo before I, I took the picture. And so then students are coming in for lunch and uh, you know, I'm taking a picture and they look at it and they go, oh, I like that. You know, I'm like, wow. You know, I'm starting to get people actually liking their photo the first time around. And, and I can almost always get it by the second time. And then I'll get a student coming in uh, you know, who's, who's really picky and it takes longer, but we get it, you know, and it, it was such a satisfying feeling. So, uh, so the week's going on, you know, and, and I'm wrestling with, with two emotions, the, the hatred of this factory system that I'm a part of, this system that, that, that values efficiency over everything else. Well, except Efficiency and then the quality of the smile so that we can sell it back to mom, you know, yank that smile out of them and then sell it to mom. I'm wrestling with the, with the hatred of this, you know, buttoning up my uniform every day and, and, and getting in into work and looking the same as, as all of my fellow employees, you know, swiping in with our employee numbers and stuff and I'm hating this and I just, I just, I, I, I loathe it and I loathe the company I work for. I don't have a problem with the people, but I hate the company and the system. And, but this, this other feeling, this growing feeling of, I'm connecting with these people as they come into my camera. I understand what they're going through. It, it's not just that, I remember high school. It's, it's not just the nervousness of, of getting your picture taken. I understand high school. I remember high school. I remember pulling open the front door and you walk in and, and you know, even as a photographer coming back a few years later, because by this time I took a couple years off high school, I uh, went to university a couple times, now I'm a photographer and, and I'm walking back in those high schools and the smell is the same and the lockers, the row upon row of lockers down every hallway is the same and every gym has the same smell and the same, the same sounds of the squeaky shoes in it and, and the same crappy overhead lighting and, and all those memories of, you know, those awkward high school years are, are coming back to me. I know what these kids are going through, not just in line for their photo, but throughout the, throughout the course of the day. I, I know what these people are going through. And, 
and I have this this growing you know empathy and understanding for them and also this growing ability to get them through and get a good picture of them and when they see their picture and they're happy to me you know this is just this is worth every penny I noticed a bunch of things over the course of the week uh, first of all the most awkward people to deal with were the teachers they were the most awkward people in front of the camera just the most awkward faces when they would sit down on on that seat together photo taken especially the gym teachers especially that you know they were so tough and intimidating when I was in high school and now they're they're practically cowering in front of the camera and the jocks as well you know the tough guys that that intimidated us all in school I mean I got along with everybody pretty good I, I didn't have enemies in high school I didn't have to worry about anybody I, I didn't get bullied or anything but you know but I, I always paid attention to what was going on and I'd see the jocks and I'd see the way that they would that they would treat the emo kids or you know the punks or the freaks or you know I'd see the nerds I would see the straight A students you know the nerds and stuff and and um, you know I could I could see the people groups and and uh, and it was funny to see they're all still there everybody's still there the punks are there uh, very unlikely to come in front of the camera it, it's funny the people who who draw the most attention to themselves in everyday life, the gym teachers, you know, with their, with their booming voices and making you drop and do push-ups, and, and the punks with their mohawks and their face piercings and, and stuff, the people who make the biggest commotion are, are, you know, unlikely to come to the camera, and when they do, they're, they're so intimidated by, by the camera. So, it, it was just, it was, it was so weird to, you know, to go in and, and to notice all this, you know, to, to remember everything again. There was one high school that I was at, I think there were four of us photographers there. It was a little smaller school, smaller high school. And um, the, the students were coming in and, and by this point, it's Thursday. And, and I'm connecting pretty well with people, you know. I'm really confident now about what I'm doing and I'm getting better, you know, my boss is happier with with the photos that I'm bringing back and I'm I'm making peace with this job that I hate and the people I love I guess um, and, and I have this day where where um, people are getting their picture taken they're going back you know to their friends or whatever when it's their friends turn to come down they go you know, go to the camera with this guy you know he's at the end of the gym whatever uh, back then I had longer hair um, you know, so I was sort of easy to, to spot among my co-workers and, and it was, you know, they were like, oh, my friend told me to come to this camera and I'm like, really? Like, um, you know, I was gaining a reputation and, and nobody had even seen their photo. They didn't even know if they liked their photo, but I was treating them like, like human beings, like I gave a crap, you know? Um, and you can remember those teachers in school that gave a crap about you, right? I mean, it may have been one high school teacher, it may have been one elementary school teacher, you know, maybe it was your kindergarten teacher, maybe it was grade seven, maybe it was your math teacher, but, you know, there was one teacher who cared about you, and, you know, I think when you're a teenager and, you, and you're finally, you're, you know, it's like you're starting to become your own person, right, and you're exploring the world, it's funny because we become, you know, most unique and most ourselves around the high school years, right, starts to come out and yet we're, we're locked into this cookie cutter high school rows of, of, um, of lockers and, and classrooms and, and you're supposed to become a, a unique special human being in this environment. But when one of those teachers or one of those adults or one of those authority figures actually acts like they, they give a crap, you know, that's that's something you notice really quick and and I think I, I was just showing that I gave a crap and and it was so cool to have these students lining up and saying my friend told me to come to this camera and and you know I could tell by these kids personalities I'm like yeah you know what I would have been friends with them in high school you know they were they were they were the kids that you know they were all a little bit different but not they didn't go all the way they didn't get face tattoos and mohawks. Um, they didn't. Uh, they didn't um, stuff people into lockers and bully them. And and they didn't stay up late at night reading math books for the fun of it. And you know we were just we were average. We were a little punk. We were a little nerdy. We were a little jock. You know. But but 
but we could all get along, you know. And and I started to to notice this crowd in the high school, and uh, and it, it was just, it was kind of cool. And so Friday comes along, and again I'm up early, and I got to drive to the school. It's kind of out in the country. It's kind of in a small town. The funny thing is, the biggest high schools are out in the country, and and I think uh, I don't know. There's something about we think that. The, the larger schools would be in town because that's where all the people are. But there's a lot of people living out in the country and they all come into this one school. And so I had to kind of drive out in the country and I had uh, the music cranked up high. It was uh, really energetic music and, and it was reminding me <clears throat> of the high school days. It was kind of a, of a punk band I was listening to, you know, kind of a punk pop punk band, a little bit of ska thrown in there. Uh, less than Jake, if that means anything to you. There was one particular album I was listening to, and it it really just seemed to to capture that I, that that high school moment in life and that becoming an adult moment, and you know that I was being brought back into because of going to all these high schools and being reminded of it all. So it's Friday morning. It's actually the very first cold day of the year as well. I mean, autumn is starting to set in. It was cold, and so I cranked the heat up in the car, except. Um, that I discovered the heat wasn't working. <laughs> so I'm driving in and, <clears throat> and I'm kind of chilly in the car and driving through the country. The music is cranked and I'm just, I'm on fire because I, I've, I've figured it out. I've, I figured out that I can, I can do this. I, I still don't know what I'm doing, but I can do it. And so we get into the school, we set up, and I'm, I'm full of energy. I just can't wait for these kids. Normally, I'm nervous about everybody coming into the gym. And this time, you know, and it's kind of like being in gym class. I was always nervous in gym class, right? Because we had to do all this physical stuff. And um, I like to lift weights and everything. I just wasn't athletic, and I, I didn't, you know, I just didn't want to be thrown into basketball games with, with the jocks and everything because I sucked. And... Uh, so, so whatever, you know, uh, you know, here I am back in the gym again, nervous about the school day starting. And, but not this day, uh, this Friday, I couldn't wait to do it. And, and you know, all week, I, I think back to Monday, and I just wanted to quit. You know, Monday I came home and I was so angry, I just wanted to quit. And, you know, there was one thing that kept me going. And the only thing that kept me going and got me through to Friday was that I had kind of made a promise that if I took the job, I wouldn't quit. And I thought, well, why would I quit if I took the job? You know, well, now I'm starting to find out the job because the job's a little tough and apparently there's a history of people finding out how hard this job can be and then quitting and leaving the company shorthanded. And, and Monday, I was furious and wanted to quit and the only thing that kept me going was... I said I'd do it. Friday comes along and and I'm excited for work again. And we go in and we set up and I can't wait for the kids to come into the gym. And they start filing in and we have a busy morning and it's a big school, but you know, by lunchtime, we don't run into that problem again where we're behind. You know, we're doing good. We've all figured out how it goes and we got a flow. And lunchtime comes along. By this point in the week, I'm giving up my entire lunch break. For every student who walks in during lunch, during our lunch break, I get up and take their picture. Because I'm eager uh, for, for more experience. I'm eager to have them come in, you know, I, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get a good shot. And then if they don't like the picture, what don't you like? I need feedback, I need to know what you don't like. And, and by the second picture I'd get it. And you, we, we would always have student helpers throughout the day because they know the school, they know the system, and so they would assist us throughout the day, but they're just doing administrative stuff. And, and I photograph them at lunch, and then they're telling all their friends in the afternoon, go to that guy over there, you know? And, and when I went back, so this is a spoiler, um, when I went back to that school the second year, they, they remembered me and said like, you know, that's our favorite photographer over there. And that's, that's really cool because it's, you know, 45 seconds in front of the camera, and yet it meant something to them. I figured out what that 45 seconds meant. So they're coming in at lunchtime, and, and I, I, I start to feel like there's something going on with my studio. 
even even when it's chaotic, even when the gym is full of students and the voices are so loud, and I gotta yell at the person six feet away, you know, sitting there for their portrait, you know, you gotta smile more, and and it, and it's just so loud, and it, it just you know begins to to weigh in on you, and and there's something going on in my studio where where. I know that the people who, who have lined up there, I know what they're going through. At home, maybe, at school, in the hallways, in their classes. I know what's going on in their life, right? I know the kinds of things. And I know that this picture, this experience, this picture has always sucked for them. It's always been crappy. And I know I can do more with it. I know the odds are this is going to be a good picture. And you know what? I don't even care about the picture. Because if I treat them well, while I take the picture, it's going to change their day. I know because they're sending their friends to my camera. When you get in the gym, it's going to be chaos. Go through the chaos all the way to the back. You'll see this guy with long hair. Go to his camera. And, you know, they get there and it's almost like a little oasis. It doesn't sound like it. It doesn't look like it. It's just a a duct tape, temporary, factory style portrait studio. But it's a moment where somebody's going to give a crap about them. And somebody is going to work hard for that picture. And, and it's, it's a little oasis. And at lunchtime, it's a laboratory. At lunchtime, they come in, and, and now I get to experiment, right? There's, there's no time crunch. There's no chaos. It's come on in. Let's get this picture, and let's get it right. And I'm starting to see human nature spill out because they're talking about how nervous they are and, and, and everything. And I'm, I'm starting to realize, you know, the uh, profundity of, of the moment and, and what's going on here. And it was so cool, you know, to experiment and, and connect with people. I had to do a cookie-cutter image. It had to look like everybody else, and yet it had to be so unique and so them. My boss had to say, this is like every other picture you've ever taken, well done. And they had to look at it and say, this is unlike any picture I've ever had taken. You know, high five. <laughs> and, and I would get handshakes, you know, I would get people like so thrilled with their picture when I let them see it, you know. And, and so I've got my little oasis in the chaos, right? I've got, my, I've got my laboratory where I'm starting to understand human nature. So, Friday afternoon. This is maybe the second week back at school. And uh, the students get weird on Friday afternoons. They're eager for the weekend. And so the students who are coming in in the afternoon, they're really, you know, being silly. They're trying to get away. It, it's also the older kids as well. So we call everybody down alphabetically, but usually by grade, you know, so all the, you know, we go through the grade nines first and on up to 12. So, you know, towards the end of the day, we're getting to the grade 12s and, you know, they run the school by now, right? They're not the, the, the grade nines and tens even the 11s are, are great to work with, right? I mean, the grade 9s are in this whole new world. And the grade 10s and 11s, they found their place and they're fitting in and they know the, the drill, they know the routine. And, and the grade 12s, they own the place now, right? And so they're coming in. It's Friday afternoon. They, they, they run the show anyways in, in their mind. And now they're, they're trying to get away with all kinds of stuff. There are literally some of them coming in with costumes. And... And, you know, trying to convince us that this is the way they dress every day. <laughs> and, and there will be obvious jocks coming in, you know, six and a half feet tall, built, you know. And, and, and you, they come in looking like nerds or whatever, right? Like big, uh, thick rimmed glasses and stuff. I mean, you know, they're trying to look like a stereotypical nerd. And you can tell that they're a jock, right? Because they have the jock haircut. It's like the one thing that gives them away. I don't, you know, just because somebody's six and a half feet tall and, 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 uh, and you know, built with, with muscle doesn't mean 
that they can't be a nerd, right? But the haircut gives it away. So you know these people are just trying to get away with it. Especially when you've seen the same pair of glasses come through your studio like seven times. You're like, all right, guys, like, we can't do this. So, but, but I didn't even think of anybody doing this, right? Like, I'm not catching on that this is going on. And until, until uh, you know, some other senior photographer comes around and you know says, "Look, you know, this this pair of glasses has been going around, so don't let me." And then I'm finally like, "Oh, right, I I have seen those glasses." If you I, <laughs> so, anyways, I, I get this one kid who comes in and they've got glasses on, but there's you know there's nothing that when they're just normal looking, when the kids just come in and they're nice and quiet and everything, it's like, well, how am I supposed to know? right? A lot of people wear glasses. And so this one kid comes in and, and um, they've, they've got, they've, they've got this mark on their face, some Harry Potter thing. And, you know, I'm like, whatever. And they want to sit there and make a silly face. I'm like, I, I, I can't let you make a silly face. Uh, I don't know if the glasses are yours. I don't know what's up with the, the mark on your face. You know, but I can't, I can't let you make a silly face. Like, my boss is going to look at these pictures, and, and I, I can't do it, you know? And yet, it's funny because I totally get it. I totally get it. I remember grade 12. Just get me out of this school, you know? Just let me have some fun and move on, right? And I just... I saw the way that they were acting and, you know, nobody was being mean or bad or anything like that. And, and I just thought, like, you know, I think it would be great to take this picture with the silly face. And so we compromised. And, uh, and I let them do something more subtle. A face that would be more subtle. And I took the picture. And they just were, like, blown away that I let them do this. And I'm telling you, I felt like a hero, you know. If... if Monday was misery and hell and dystopia. Friday is utopia, heaven. It's, you know, I'm the hero. <laughs> A few minutes later, the, uh, the senior photographer comes back around and says, look, there's this kid coming around trying to pull off this Harry Potter thing with the glasses and mark on the face, and I'm like... You know, oh, okay, uh, yeah. And they're like, do not let them get away with anything. And I'm thinking, uh, okay. You know, I'm just straight faced, letting on, like, okay. Because it's the principal's kid. And I just about threw up. <laughs> My stomach sunk. The principal's kid, I let the principal's kid get away with that. It's not their glasses. They got some stupid mark on their face. They're making a silly face. The principal's kid. <laughs> oh. And in the moment, I thought, well, it's been fun. I, there's no way out of this. My boss looks at every single picture that I take. He's looked at every picture this week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. There's... There's no escaping it. And there's no deleting it either because he sees the deleted photos. I can't just sneak in and get rid of these like that our system doesn't work like that. There's no getting rid of these photos. And, you know, it hits me in this moment. I, I, I just, I'm as good as gold the rest of the afternoon. We're pretty well done for the day anyways. But, but it hits me, you know. This sucks because... I hated my job Monday. Sunday night, I loved my job. Monday morning, I loved my job. Monday afternoon, hated it. Wanted to quit. Only stayed because I promised I would. And I fought tooth and claw all week long to find a way to treat these people like human beings and give them what they needed and give my company what they needed. You know, and I finally realized I can... I can be as efficient as the company needs me to be. Look, I can't spend 10 minutes with every student because there's not time. And, and, it's, and it's apparently unnecessary. I can do this job in a minute. I can get a cool portrait in a minute. 
I can get a cookie cutter picture that looks like everybody else's photo. But for the first time in this student's life, it's unlike any photo they've ever had. It's finally a photo they like. And I figured out how to do it. I figured out how to make everybody happy. And then, I, yeah, I let this, you know, grade 12 student who I was just a little too empathetic with, let them get away with something and it turns out to be the principal's kid. You know, going into the job, I didn't need the money. I didn't do it for the money. The money's nice, I still had school to pay for, but, but I wasn't like desperate for the money, right? I knew the money would come. I could always get a job, I always work hard. The money will come. I did it because I wanted to learn photography. And you know, by that point, I actually still didn't understand how the camera worked or the lights or anything. <laughs> I still didn't get it. But man, I had finally figured out how to connect with people, you know? Like, I had something good going. I had my little lab, I had my little oasis. I figured out how to make everybody happy and to do it in like 45 seconds. We got back to the office and he was out for a meeting, the boss was out. And uh, the office manager told us, you know, just go home for the weekend, it's all right. If he needs to talk to you, he'll call you. I thought, oh, he'll call me all right. <laughs> and and uh, I'm waiting for the call. Friday night, no call. And I'm thinking, whatever, I don't know what he does with his time. He's got all weekend to see those photos. And Saturday, no call. Sunday, no call. You know, Monday, I'm back in his office and he's reviewing my day's work. I made it back to Monday. And I'm thinking, if he's still got those photos around from Friday, this is it. Um, and I'm coming up with every excuse I can to justify letting this kid be silly for their photo. And he goes through my photos from the day and says goodnight, you know, you're doing a good job, have a good night. And I'm like, did he not see these photos? Like, how did he miss them? I mean, so I, I guess just the rush of, you know, Friday and the weekend, you know, Everything was weird that Friday afternoon and they snuck by, but still that kid's gonna get their pictures, they're gonna get their packages that go home to the parents. And, and they go straight to the principal, right? The, the, um, the packages, we deliver a big crate of, of the photos and then they get distributed to the students. We give them to the principal. He's, he's gonna look for his kid's picture. The kid's not even gonna see the photo, just the principal's gonna see the photo and the student card with the photo on it. And all fall, all September, all October, I'm waiting to get called in to my boss's office. And it never happens. And I don't know what happened. I still, I wonder right now, whatever happened to that photo, did it, did the student look at it and at least get a good laugh at it? Did did they have, you know, their student card for the last year? Did it bring them some happiness? However immature it may have been, did it bring them some happiness to pull that out all, all year long? Do they, I kept my high school student card as a souvenir. Do they still have that student card? I mean, they're in the adult world now, right? This is a few years ago and they're in the adult world now. And, and I'm curious what they're doing with themselves, you know? Did they go to university, college? Where, where are they working? What are they doing? What did that picture mean to them? Did the principal ever see it? Maybe, just maybe, it actually brightened his day up. Maybe they came in for a retake, right? Maybe it was, okay, real funny, get your butt back in there for a retake, you know? Um, I don't know, I wonder. And, and, and I'm so thankful that my boss never saw the photo. And I'm so thankful that I kept that job and it turned into um, five more years of work for me. It was supposed to be a three-month contract and I did really well. 
Um, they kept calling me back, and, and I would be there for the entire school year. And uh, I won a couple of awards along the way for my creativity, and, and I can look back and, as a photographer, and even as a person, you know, this was, this was one of the, one very important chunk of my life.